All right. Welcome to the shop. My name is Michael. We are building a print NC CNC router mill, and this video is entirely about steel. Uh, what to get, where to get it, and how much it costs me to get all of this that you see here. All right, let's do this. What kind of steel do you want for your print NC mill? Everything you see here, except for this piece, is two by three rectangular tubing. This is two by four rectangular tubing uh, for the gantry on the x-axis that goes back and forth with the spindle. So when you're trying to decide between hot rolled and cold rolled, there's not a whole lot of difference for this type of project because as Jeremy Fielding talks about on his YouTube channel, all steel basically has the same modulus of elasticity, which means they have about the same amount of flex. So if you're looking to spend more just to get a higher grade of steel, you're not really going to gain much. But what you can do like this on your gantry, if you want your gantry to be more rigid, is to get a taller profile. And a lot of other people that are building the print NC have done that as well. They've just beefed it up that way. And I wanted mine to be really beefy, really ready for a lot of high quality precision work. One of the questions that came to mind when I was looking for steel was, do I pay the fee to have it cut where I buy it? Or do I cut it here myself? You can do that. And I don't know that there's an advantage of having it cut where you buy it. The reason I say that is because I was hoping these would be perfectly perpendicular, but I'm not sure this will come across on the camera, but maybe this piece, you can see it. It's not perpendicular. That's really important because these pieces have to be really square. And I was hoping that they would cut them a little more accurately, but unfortunately they didn't. So the solution could be that I buy the raw pieces and then cut them myself with either an angle grinder with a cutoff disc or a chop saw and get a nice perpendicular 90 degree cut on these pieces, especially these pieces that are there. It's critical that they're nice and square, but I didn't want to do that. So I had the place that I bought the steel from cut them, but I still need to clean them up. So if you're deciding, should I pay for the cut or not? It's really a matter of convenience. These I was able to put in my vehicle and drive back. If you're buying them raw, you're going to have to have a way of transporting that long piece back to wherever you're doing your project. Another question I had when I was looking for the steel was, should I have it shipped to me or should I go pick it up locally? And it's really up to you what you find in your area, what's going to make the most sense in terms of cost. Shipping costs are going to be pretty expensive. I, I'll put up on screen the total weight of all this. It's going to cost quite a bit. You know, it's, I, I think for me in the Midwest, it was going to be like, hundred dollars or under hundred dollars to ship all this and it just made sense for me to go pick it up it was about an hour and a half but that's something you're gonna have to factor in go get it locally or get it shipped to your place one of the main reasons I'm building this is to save money and when it comes to getting metal the steel for the project 
I knew that it was going to be more cost effective to just go pick it up. So what I did was I went on Google Maps and I searched the area for steel distributors and steel supply, those type of search terms. And I found some places you got to make the calls, call them up and say, hey, I need this and that. What do you have? A lot of these places don't like dealing with small orders as it is, so it's really important that you have your measurements before you call, because if you call and say, well, I think I need this, it's just not worth their time. So it's really important that you have all your measurements. And I had to do that on the calculator. I'll put a link to the calculator in the description, as well as all the other info. And let me know if you have questions in the comments below about steel. So, all right, moving on. Another note on buying steel for your print NC. When you go to pick your order up, if you're buying locally, make sure you check the order. When I went to check these plates, I'm like, those are steel. And sure enough, they were steel plates. So they had cut steel instead of aluminum. Also, they were missing an entire one of these. So double check, measure, make sure it's the right material, steel or aluminum, and uh, just make sure it's good to go. All right, the part of the video where I'm sure a lot of you might skip to to see how much I spent. With all the metal that you see here, the steel and the aluminum, I spent $327.62, I believe. And this can be a big expense for some, depending on your market. You know, steel is not the cheapest, especially right now, but uh, despite having crooked cuts and whatnot, I think it was a decent deal. All right, moving forward, next steps are to print some parts. I actually printed this because I wanted to get going on the project. This is the steel tubing radius tool. So make sure you print this out and you can measure or check. It's kind of like a gauge uh, to see the radius of your tubing. So I think, what is this, number six is the one we'll go for. Just gives you different options. And then you take this number six and you print your parts based off of that profile. This is where the action starts. Now that I know the profile of the steel tubing and everything, I can start printing parts for this as well as drill and tap everything. So we're good to go on the next steps and we'll see you in the next one.